So we're going to pull out the slide out kitchen. Need to lift the latch, pull the latch across and slowly sliding it out. We can drop our legs down, undoing the little latch underneath. We can adjust our legs and if you need to lift it a little bit more level, have them a bit on an angle to start. Tighten them off on the butterfly clips and lifting up and out. Lifting up, sliding our wind guards out into place. Lifting up our little cooking light. Our drawers for our pantry and lifting up our drying rack and hose. Connecting through, we've got our little air fittings for our water. Simply pulling them out, pulling out and connecting up. One and two. Our little light for the cooking light is situated in here as well. Simply plugging in so we have light. We can put our gas bayonet in so we can fire up the four burner. So we've got a double bayonet at the back so we can plug one in for the four burner and then you've got the other one for the barbecue if you brought one along. Now the cooker has the little piezo starter underneath which is run by a D battery so we're simply pushed down turned a light. We have our cutlery drawer and another storage drawer with the hose for the barbecue. The kitchen sink is the only part not hooked up to the grey water so we simply need to just pull down the little Constantine pipe from underneath and draining off into a bucket. When we're done we can simply push the hose back up We can disconnect from our water and slide him back in. Unplugging for our little cooking light and storing away. Pushing our tap down, pulling our drying rack down, locking into place. Our little light goes down, lifting our wind guards. Locking into place, our legs. And locking them back in and disconnecting from our bayonet and putting our dust cover on. The hose simply snakes from end to end, just feeding in. And finally, just checking underneath that when you've pushed everything in, nothing's hanging down below. Everything's up out of the way so it doesn't get caught. Beautiful. And sliding back in nice and slow. Locking away, locking away. To open the rear of the Solera 12, we need to take out our pin and undo the latch. That will allow us to drop our wheel down. We can then undo our three latches here and opening up the side walls. Making sure they're both right out. Undoing our two clips at the top. Now we've got two little locks on the inside. One and two. If you can't do this from the outside, you are able to access it from inside. Lifting up the back, locking into place. And then folding our mattress out. These can be locked, so if you need to take off for the day, lock it up and the van is fully secure. We have two ways to get water into our outlets in the van. 
either through our water tanks, two 100 litre tanks, or our mains water pressure. When we want to feed in and use our tanks, we simply undo the cap, hose in, whether it be food grade hose in a filter first if we're wanting to use it as drinking water, feeding in all 200 litres from here. When you're done, simply place the cap over the top. If you're at a van park and want to take advantage of town water, we simply remove the cap and then I've got a little male threaded fitting here that simply screws in and hooking into the town water. That will supply to all the outlets, bypass the tanks and you will not have to use the pump. If you're looking to take advantage of using the outdoor kick-ass ensuite tent, simply undoing our zippers unstrapping from inside on the two straps dropping down and we can simply open up and all we need to do is peg it down we have access to our outdoor shower entry in via the zippers on the side when we're finished simply folding back in folding across and rolling up making sure our clips are over the top we've got one here Let's tuck in here. In this compartment we have the toilet cassette. Now the toilet has its own separate flush tank compared to your tanks. Simply removing the cap and feeding your water and, and product through the top. Now you've got your gauge here on the side. It is a pressured fill. So what we'll do is place this cap on top so we don't have any spillage off the side. Feeding in your water. Once you have your desired amount, simply remove, place your cap back on top and it's ready for use. Now, you will not get signaled that you've run out of flush water. You'll just run out, but you will get signaled it's time to empty the cassette by a little light on your toilet. When it is time, simply lift the little lever from underneath, sliding out. Now, it does slide out nice and easy, so if you ever feel any resistance, don't start pulling on it. You may have simply left the chute open inside. Once we've removed it, it'll automatically shut itself. We wheel away to where we need to go. taking the cap off and pouring in while pressing the air breather. When we're done, we can give it a clean out, a bit more chemical in it, cap back over the top, storing away, ready for use again. When using the Truma Ultra Rapid, it can either work via 240 volt power or gas. So simply to run the gas, we'll turn the gas bottle on, remove the cowl cover, and ignite inside. Now when we ignite the system, we have our little three-way toggle switch down here. We've got 60 degrees up and 70 degrees down in the middle is off. We'll select our temperature, we'll hear the ga hot, gas hot water system start to light. Now if we've just done those three steps in a row, one, two, three, come straight in, we're probably going to get a little red light fault down the bottom here which we have, which is telling me the gas hasn't got to the unit in time. So we'll simply turn it off and try again. 
If we don't get it the second time, we'll try one more time. And if we get another fault the third time, we're gonna start the troubleshoot thing. How we turn the gas bottle on, how we remove the cowl cover. If there is a gas build up in there, it will not light and will need time to vent. So you may as well go do something else while you wait. Once the hot water system has ignited, you could uh, leave that on the whole time you're at site so that each time the system does cool down, it'll fire itself back up and heat to temperature. When you're done with the system, there's a little yellow toggle underneath to drain the system. Now, when you've put it into storage, Truma recommend draining that as it has no anode. So simply lifting the lever underneath from a horizontal position into a vertical, which will dump all 14 liters out when you're finished making sure you put back into the horizontal position. Now, if you wish to run this off 240 volt power, simply lifting up underneath and there will be a lead plugged into a power point off the hot water system. All we need to do is simply turn that on at the power point. Now, the hot water system is heating off, off an element. We don't have to touch any of this or worry about the cowl cover. The Solera 12 is fitted with two Enerdrive chargers, the 40 amp DC to DC charger and the 40 amp AC charger. The DC to DC charger will be taking in the input from the 300 watts of solar panels on the roof, plus any additional panels you've plugged into the external Anderson plug. It'll also take the feed from your car while driving. The AC charger is plugged into a power point so that when you're in mains power, that will take over the charge. The 2000 watt inverter has a designated power point. We simply need to just flick on at the back here and then we can take up to 2000 watts into this power point labeled here. It's also black so it stands out from the others. When you are done with the inverter, make sure you simply turn it off so that it's not drawing any power even when not in use. To make it life a bit easier, it will be supplied with a little fob key that has the on and off so you don't have to reach under the bed each time. At the front of the Solera 12, we have our two circuit breakers. Our first one is for our power. Simply, if there's a big surge of power come through the line, it will trip here. Otherwise, another great way to store the van so that no power is coming off the batteries. When you're ready to use again, simply pushing the little toggle back up. The second one is for our Anderson. So if your car feeds in a big surge of power, it's going to trip here and protect the DC to DC charger and our batteries. We also have on the panel here our outside light for a bit of light on the off side of the van. Instrument which will turn off the panel. Our little resettable brake is that isolate so if anything goes wrong they're simply just resettable by pushing in. Two 12 volt sockets and our RCD for 240 volt power. Now if your power trips you can simply lift up and reset. We have our digital display for our voltmeter, so it's letting us know the batteries are at 13.3 at the moment, and our amps, what we're drawing off the van. So at the moment, we're just drawing the one amp. This will always tell us what we're drawing. Our two chargers, our DC to DC, and our AC charger will both tell us what we're putting into the batteries. On our DC distribution panel, we have our little door light, which is giving us light outside near the door. Our floor light, which lights up our little floor light and our door handle here. Radio, which giving us power out to our radio. Roof lights, which enables us to use the roof, roof lights, which all work off their little sensors, can also be held in to dim. And our shower light is for our external shower tent for a bit of light outside. At the kitchen, we have our two water gauges. We have our kitchen light switch pump which will enable our first water tank to come into play. I'm going to change the way I said that, sorry. Sure. Take it from the beginning if you can, mate. From the beginning? Yeah, if you can. Okay. Yep. And where you go. At the kitchen, we have our two gauges, one for our fresh tanks, one for our grey tank. We have our kitchen light switch, pump, which will turn on the pump and turn on the fresh water tank to let us know how much water we have between the two tanks and flicking on the grey which will show us how much water we have in the grey water tank. So now we're going to roll out the awning, attach the anti-flap kits and install the walls. So our first step is to wind the awning out and drop the legs down. 
So we simply need to pull the leg out, undo it from the pivot point at the back, dropping one down, bit of an angle. Second leg, sliding down. And giving yourself a bit of an angle. So we do that, we're simply winding out. Now as we get to our full extension, what we want to do is keep an eye on the vinyl. We'll see our arms overextend and the vinyl go floppy. We want to wind back, we'll feel it getting tight here. And we just watch the legs once they just kick back in. That's our perfect length for our anti-flap kit. So what we can do then, is lower it down so we're working at head height. Grabbing our anti-flap bar. Placing into the bracket. We want to stay on the inside of the leg here. Moving to the outside, retracting the lever and locking ourselves in over a little nut and bolt on the front of the awning. The reason we stayed inside the leg is because when we wind the awning back in, the little awning guide here is what's going to lock our awning into place. If we come on and go out wide and snap that off, the awning isn't going to lock itself properly back in when finished. Grabbing our anti-flap bars that clip in over the top. We don't want to go under the awning, we simply want to butt up next to it. Clipping it in, clipping it in. Now with this end, we butt up next to that, lifting this up so it clips in, clips in, and doing up our knobs as well. And then same at the other end. Once we have our anti-flap bars on, we can start to attach our draft skirt and our sail track pieces. Now once we have our sail track pieces in, we can put up our walls. You could choose to independently set up either end or we're going to put them all up.
Okay, now we're going to get some ventilation inside by opening up our windows. Make it nice and easy if working by yourself. It's a little triangle. Another triangle. Nice, neat little fold over the top. And rolling up. Finally, we can adjust our legs so that we're at the height that we require and looping through to hold into place on the Velcro straps. Once we've got these into place, our final poles go in across the middle of the awning. Looping them in as well. and our poles across the awning vinyl. And there we have the full awning and annex setup. If you would like any more information, please don't hesitate to contact one of our friendly staff members.